if one would think about the Renaissance area, they would think about three things. Um, the illusionistic um, painting techniques, such as foreshadowing and the linear, linear perspective, the humanism aspect and the naturalism aspect of the faces. Yes, and we're, if we were to fast forward about 300 years during um, Manet's time, you see that the characteristics of the Renaissance were completely changed in that you have unusual visual angles as well as the inclusion of movement and uh, relatively thin, small brush strokes. Mm -hmm. And we needed these two movements along other movements. The 20th century produced many artists and one of them being Pablo Picasso, who single-handedly started an art movement, which is Cubism. Well, these artists uh, reshaped what we think of as the gaze uh, by paintings by Titian with his Venus of Olympia. Venus of Urbino. <laughs> Venus of Urbino. <laughs> um, we have Manet's Olympia, as well as Picasso's Les Demoiselles d'Avignon. Gaze refers to the viewer's engagement with the art object and is frequently suggested of a power dynamic between the object and the spectator. And it's interesting because modern origins of the gaze are based on psychoanalytical theory that relates to visual and sexual attentions and the implications of gendered human perception. Gazing as well is considered central to sexual attraction and has both a positive and negative identification. Thus, the gaze gives structured stability to our fantasies of self and the other. Well, I think it's important that we differentiate between the two types of gaze. There's the uppercase gaze, which has this form of interaction between the gazer and the gazee, and the lowercase gaze, which is just a specific instance of looking. The function of the art they made at the time was to trap the gaze. I feel like that was their main aim because the viewer is falsely put in, in the position of the eye. So I guess we should be talking about Monet's gaze versus uh, Titian's gaze, mm -hmm. which would be, uh, if we're going to think about historical fragments into seemingly inept, shallow compositions of color planes, the dynamic of the gaze as an aspect of the master's style and Manet's em emulation of it re-encapsulates Manet's early interactions that later structured his engagement with others. During the 1865, um, critics have said that they, when looking at Manet's Olympia, they were met with a deadly gaze. Well, yeah, so it was thought that the exp expression on Olympia's face was that of being prematurely aged and vicious. But I think we have to take into account the context of this painting and the sense of sexuality and prostitution specifically. When looking at the details in the painting, you notice a black cat. Um, that black cat, as critics have stated, um, is like a corpse on the counters of the morgue. I don't like that expression, but that's what critics used to say about the cat. Um, but they were suggesting that uh, Olympia comes from a notorious area of prostitution during that time. Well, I think it's interesting because in Manet's Olympia, you see the black cat, and if you're comparing it to Titian's Venus, you have a dog in a very similar position. And close, and the dog represents fidelity in that sense, uh, which is something that is more respected than that of prostitution and the black cat representing more of the dirty side of the art world. But when noticing Olympia's gaze and Venus of Urbino's gaze, you, you notice that there's a difference, even if it's light. This gaze is hers. She's confident. Uh, she's comfortable in her nudity. And her gaze isn't one of discomfort. Yes, and when comparing it to the gaze, she's not necessarily looking directly at the viewer, but you can see that she's looking out at something it is also more seductive in its nature, although she isn't, she's nude. They're very different in what they're trying to express through their gaze. 
looking at uh, Olympia's gaze, it's slightly like soul stealing. Mm -hmm. Like she's looking through you, mm -hmm. almost as she knows who she is, she knows what she wants, and you are just there to provide that for her. I do agree, but I feel like there is one detail we didn't talk about, which I feel is important. When looking at Olympia's painting, you notice how she cuts off communication with her attendant. She doesn't even look at that attendant. And that translates in how she's looking at the spectator. And so in what way would you say? Like, how, how do we become this maid? Um, it's like she's ignoring us. She's not looking at us directly. No. Manet's Olympia, which was made in 1863, was considered vulgar when it was first displayed. Mm -hmm. The painting had nothing to do with the model being nude, but it had to do with the unconventional subject depicted and her seemingly oppositional returned gaze. Well, I think it, just, it wasn't complying with the codes of humility mm -hmm. that the time was known for. and. The compliance to her return gaze is ambiguous and unsettling with the viewer, or the viewers at that time. Um, Manet actually used uh, Titian's Venus of Urbino as a composition for his painting, Olympio. And when comparing these two paintings, um, you can understand why Manet's painting caused such controversy. So both of the women in the picture are similarly undressed, reclining in one hand over their waist. Mm -hmm. And Titian's Venus is coy, her head is cocked to one side. Um, she has a look that could be understood as adoration or love. Um, there is no sexual connotation to her pose. The hand appears to rest naturally rather than being held there for any reason of modesty. Well, unlike Titian's model, her head is held high and points directly out of the painting, directly out at the viewer. And this gaze further emphasized by the way the black servant in the painting is ignored despite bringing an offering of flowers, probably by one of her suitors. Mm -hmm. Bringing Pablo Picasso into this equation. Looking at his work, you notice that there are five nude female prostitutes. Um, they're actually from a brothel in Barcelona. Each figure is depicted in a disconcerting, confrontational manner, and none is conventionally feminine. The women appear as slightly menacing and rendered with angular and disjointed body shapes. Well, there's this infusion of psychic tension and these various methods of distortion mm -hmm. between the bodies and the relationship between space, time, mass, and dimensions of the body. Going back to the psychoanalytical studies, um, we know that feelings and ideas of sexual guilt undergo symbolic displacements. For example, there are other parts of the body, such as the limbs, eyes, mouth, and nose, that can be used to express concealed wishes of various kinds, for example, denying the mother's sexual nature. So according to Sigmund Freud, the female body figures in male fantasy are mapped as a castrated body. So like Les Demoiselles does not simply represent a figure of impotence, rather women become a phallic symbol uh, through her associations with powerful phantasmatic energy. Uh, when studying Steinberg, they see Picasso's Demoiselles as immensely phallic. The prostitute's second from left arrives like a projectile. The one in the center is a pillar nude. The crouching figure at the right evokes a jumping jack and all the women start up like jerked puppets. Well, numerous critics have framed this painting as self-ministering ploy to exercise his private demons in his fear of women and others. Don't you feel like Manet was reserved so his paintings as well were reserved? He didn't want anyone depicting his emotions so the gaze is hard to understand unlike Picasso's gaze or Venus of Urbino's gaze? Well, we can never separate the artist and the painting. Mm -hmm. No matter what the subject of the painting is, they are depicting themselves, they are showing themselves mm -hmm. through their motion. So I feel like it would be foolish to say that this depiction of Olympia was not a representation of himself and his 
repressed ideas and thoughts that he felt he couldn't share with others. Mm -hmm. But it's the only painting whose gaze caused such controversy. In Picasso, the gaze in his is very outwardly aggressive, mm -hmm. almost attacking you with their eyes, that you, you can't get away from them, mm -hmm. in a sense. And I wonder if this was part of Picasso's personality. I would assume that it would be, mm -hmm. if the other depictions were true as well, like with Manet and his, uh, the, what you were saying before. Mm -hmm. I, I feel that it has to be, they have to be connected in some way, that they are trying to see the audience, see the world, through the eyes of their subjects.